This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Clayton Smith. Paradise Lost by John Milton. Book 5, Part 1. Now mourn her rosy steps, the eastern clime advancing, sowed the earth with orient pearl. When Adam waked, so customed, for his sleep was airy light, from pure digestion bred and temperate vapors bland, which the only sound of leaves and fuming rills, Aurora's fan lightly dispersed, and the shrill matin song of birds on every bough. So much the more his wonder was to find unwakened Eve with tresses discomposed and glowing cheek as through unquiet rest. He on his side leaning half raised, with looks of cordial love hung over her enamored, and beheld beauty which whether waking or asleep shot forth peculiar graces then with voice mild as when zephyrus on flora breathes her hand soft touching whispered thus awake my fairest my espoused my latest found heaven's last best gift my ever new delight awake the morning shines and the fresh field calls us we lose the prime to mark how spring our tinted plants how blows the citron grove what drops the myrrh and what the balmy reed how nature paints her colors how the bee sits on the bloom extracting liquid sweet such whispering waked her but with startled eye on adam whom embracing thus she spake soul in whom my thoughts find all repose my glory my perfection glad i see thy face and morn returned for i this night such night till this i never passed have dreamed if dreamed not as I oft am want of thee, works of day past, or morrow's next design, but of offence and trouble, which my mind knew never till this irksome night. Methought close at mine ear one called me forth to walk with gentle voice. I thought it thine. It said, Why sleep'st thou, Eve? Now is the pleasant time, the cool, the silent, save where silence yields to the night-warbling bird, that now awake tunes sweetest his love-labored song. Now reigns full-orbed the moon, and with more pleasing light shadowy sets off the face of things, in vain if none regard. Heaven wakes with all his eyes, whom to behold but thee, nature's desire, in whose sight all things joy, with ravishment attracted by thy beauty still to gaze. I rose as at thy call, but found thee not. To find thee I directed then my walk, and on me thought alone I passed through ways that brought me on a sudden to the tree of interdicted knowledge. Fair it seemed, much fairer to my fancy than by day, and as I wondering looked, beside it stood one shaped and winged like one of those from heaven by us oft seen. His dewy locks distilled ambrosia. On that tree he also gazed, and, O oh, fair plant, said he, with fruits surcharged, deigns none to ease thy load and taste thy sweet, nor God nor man, is knowledge so despised or envy, or what reserve forbids to taste, forbid who will, none shall from me withhold longer thy offered good. Why else set here? Thus that he paused not, but with ventrous arm, he plucked, he tasted. Me damp horror chilled at such bold words, vouched with a deed so bold, but he thus overjoyed. O oh, fruit divine! Sweet of thyself, but much more sweet, thus cropped, forbidden here, it seems as only fit for gods, yet able to make gods of men. And why not gods of men, since good? The more communicated, more abundant grows the author not impaired, but honored more. Here, happy creature, fair angelic Eve, partake thou also. Happy though thou art, happier thou mayst be. Where the ear canst not be, taste this, and be henceforth among the gods thyself a goddess, not to earth confined, but sometimes in the air as we, sometimes ascend to heaven by merit thine, and see what life the gods live there, and such live thou. So saying, he drew nigh unto me, held even to my mouth, of that same fruit held part which he had plucked. The pleasant savory smell so quickened appetite that I methought could not but taste. Forthwith up to the clouds with him I flew, and underneath beheld the earth outstretched immense, 
a prospect wide and various, wondering at my flight and changed to this high exaltation. Suddenly my guide was gone, and I, methought, sunk down and fell asleep. But oh, how glad I wake to find this but a dream. Thus Eve her night related, and thus Adam answered, sat. Best image of myself, and dearer half, the trouble of thy thoughts this night in sleep affects me equally. Nor can I like this uncouth dream of evil sprung, I fear. Yet evil wince. In thee can harbor none created pure. But know that in the soul are many lesser faculties that serve reason as chief. Among these fancy next her office holds of all external things, which the five watchful senses represent. She forms imaginations, airy shapes, which reason joining or disjoining frames all what we affirm or what deny, and calls our knowledge or opinion then retires into her private cell when nature rests. Oft in her absence mimic fancy wakes to imitate her, but misjoining shapes wild work produces oft, and most in dreams, ill-matching words and deeds long past or late. Some such resemblances, methinks, I find of our last evening's talk, in this thy dream, but with addition strange. Yet be not sad. Evil into the mind of God or man may come and go, so unapproved, and leave no spot or blame behind, which gives me hope that what in sleep thou didst abhor to dream, waking thou never wilt consent to do. Be not disheartened, then, nor cloud those looks that want to be more cheerful and serene than when fair morning first smiles on the world. And let us to our fresh employment rise Among the groves, the fountains, and the flowers That open now their choicest bosomed smells Reserved from night, and kept for thee in store. So cheered he his fair spouse, and she was cheered, But silently a gentle tear let fall from either eye, And wiped them with her hair. Two other precious drops that ready stood, Each in their crystal sluice, he, ere they fell, kissed, as the gracious signs of sweet remorse and pious awe that feared to have offended. So all was cleared, and to the field they haste, but first from under shady arbor's roof, soon as they forth were come to open sight of dayspring, and the sun, who scarce uprisen, with wheels yet hovering o'er the ocean brim, shot parallel to the earth his dewy ray. Discovering in wide landscape all the east of paradise and Eden's happy plains. Lowly they bowed adoring, and began their orisons, each morning duly paid in various style, for neither various style nor holy rapture wanted they to praise their maker, in fit strains pronounced, or sung unmeditated. Such prompt eloquence flowed from their lips, in prose or numerous verse, more tunable than needed lute or harp to add more sweetness. And they thus began. These are thy glorious works, parent of good almighty. Thine this universal frame, thus wondrous fair. Thyself, how wondrous then, unspeakable, who sitst above these heavens, to us invisible or dimly seen in these thy lowest works. Yet these declare thy goodness beyond thought and power divine. Speak ye who best can tell, ye sons of light, angels, for ye behold him, and with songs and choral symphonies, day without night, circle his throne, rejoicing. Ye in heaven, on earth, join all ye creatures to extol him first, him last, him midst and without end, fairest of stars, last in the train of night, if better thou belong not to the dawn. Sure pledge of day that crowns the smiling morn with thy bright circlet. Praise him in thy sphere while day arises, that sweet hour of prime. Thou son of this great world, both eye and soul acknowledge him thy greater. Sound his praise in thy eternal course, both when thou climbst, and when high noon hast gained, and when thou fallst. Moon that now meets the orient sun, now fliest with the fixed stars, fixed in their orb that flies, and ye five other wandering fires, 
that move in mystic dance, not without song, resound his praise, who out of darkness called up light. Air and ye elements, the eldest birth of nature's womb, that in quaternion run perpetual circle, multiform, and mix and nourish all things. Let your ceaseless change vary to our great Maker's still new praise. Ye mists and exhalations that now rise from hill or streaming lake, dusky or gray, till the sun paints your fleecy skirts with gold in honor to the world's great author, rise. Whether to deck with clouds the uncolored sky, or wet the thirsty earth with falling showers, rising or falling, still advance his praise, his praise ye winds, that from four quarters blow, breathe soft or loud, and wave your tops, ye pines with every plant and sign of worship, wave, fountains and ye that warble as ye flow, melodious murmurs, warbling tune his praise. Join voices, all ye living souls, ye birds that sing up to heaven gate ascend. Bear on your wings and in your notes his praise. Ye that in waters glide, and ye that walk the earth and stately tread, or lowly creep. Witness if I be silent, mourn or even to hill or valley, fountain or fresh shade, made vocal by my song, and taught his praise. Hail, universal Lord! Be bounteous still to give us only good, and if the night have gathered aught of evil or concealed, disperse it, as now light dispels the dark. So prayed they innocent, and to their thoughts firm peace recovered soon and wanted calm. On to their morning's rural work they haste among sweet dews and flowers, where any row of fruit trees over woody reached too far their pampered boughs and needed hands to check fruitless embraces. Or they led the vine to wet her elm, she spoused about him twines her marriageable arms, and with her brings her dower the adopted clusters to adorn his barren leaves. Them thus employed, beheld with pity heaven's high king, and to him called Raphael, the sociable spirit, that deigned to travel with Tobias, and secured his marriage with the seven times wedded maid. Raphael, said he, Thou hearest what stir on earth Satan from hell escaped through the darksome gulf hath raised in paradise? And how disturbed this night the human pair! How he designs in them at once to ruin all mankind! Go, therefore, half this day as friend with friend converse with Adam, in what bower or shade thou find'st him from the heat of noon retired, to respite his day labor with repast or with repose, and such discourse bring on as may advise him of his happy state, happiness in his power left free to will, left to his own free will, his will, though free yet mutable. Whence warn him to beware he swerve not to secure, tell him with all his danger, and from whom. What enemy late fallen himself from heaven is plotting now the fall of others from like state of bliss? By violence, no, for that shall be withstood, but by deceit and lies, this let him know, least willfully transgressing, he pretends surprisal, unadmonished, unforewarned. So spake the Eternal Father, and fulfilled all justice, nor delayed the winged saint after his charge received, but from among thousand celestial ardors where he stood, veiled with his gorgeous wings, upspringing light flew through the midst of heaven. Angelic choirs on each hand parting to his speed gave way through all the imperial road, till at the gate of heaven arrived, the gate self-opened wide on golden hinges turning, as by work divine the sovereign architect had framed. From hence, no cloud or to obstruct his sight star interposed, however small he sees, not unconformed to other shining globes, earth and the garden of God, with cedars crowned above all hills, as when by night the glass of Galileo, less assured, observes imagined lands and relics in the moon, or Pilate from amidst the Cyclades, Delos or Samos, first appearing, kens a cloudy spot. Down thither prone in flight he speeds, and through the vast ethereal sky sails between worlds and worlds, with steady wing now on the polar winds, then with quick fan winnows the buxom air, till within soar of towering eagles, 
To all the fowls he seems a phoenix, gazed by all as that sole bird went to enshrine his relics in the sun's bright temple, to Egyptian Thebes he flies. At once on the eastern cliff of paradise he lights, and to his proper shape returns a seraph winged. Six wings he wore, to shade his lineaments divine, the pair that clad each shoulder broad came mantling o'er his breast with regal ornament, the middle pair girt like a starry zone his waist, and round skirted his loins and thighs with downy gold and colors dipped in heaven, the third his feet shadowed from either heel with feathered mail, sky-tinctured grain. Like Maya's son he stood and shook his plumes, that heavenly fragrance filled the circuit wide. Straight knew him all the bands of angels under watch, and to his state and to his message high in honor rise, for on some message high they guessed him bound. Their glittering tents he passed, and now is come into the blissful field, through groves of myrrh and flowering odors, cassia, nard, and balm, a wilderness of sweets, for nature here wantoned as in her prime, and played at will her virgin fancies, pouring forth more sweet, wild above rule or art, enormous bliss. Him through the spicy forest onward come, Adam discerned, as in the door he sat of his cool bower, while now the mounted sun shot down direct his fervid rays to warm earth's inmost womb, more warmth than Adam need, and Eve within, due at her hour, prepared for dinner savory fruits, of taste to please true appetite, and not disrelish thirst of nectarous draughts between, from milky stream, berry, or grape, to whom thus Adam called. Haste hither, Eve, and worth thy sight, behold eastward among those trees, what glorious shape comes this way moving? Seems another morn risen on mid-noon, some great behest from heaven to us perhaps he brings, and will vouchsafe this day to be our guest. But go with speed, and what thy stores contain, bring forth and pour abundance, fit to honor and receive our heavenly stranger. Well we may afford our givers their own gifts, and large bestow from large bestowed, where nature multiplies her fertile growth, and by disburdening grows more fruitful, which instructs us not to spare. To whom thus Eve, Adam, Earth's hallowed mould, of God-inspired, small store will serve, where store all seasons, ripe for use, hangs on the stalk, save what by frugal storing firmness gains to nourish, and superfluous moist consumes. But I will haste, and from each bough and brake, each plant and juiciest gourd, will pluck such choice to entertain our angel guest, as he beholding, shall confess that here on earth God hath dispensed his bounties as in heaven. So saying, with dispatchful looks and haste she turns, on hospitable thoughts intent. What choice to choose for delicacy best, what order so contrived as not to mix tastes not well joined, inelegant, but bring taste after taste, upheld with kindliest change, bestirs her then, and from each tender stalk whatever earth all-bearing mother yields in India east or west, or middle shore in Pontus or the Punic coast, or where Alcinous reigned, fruit of all kinds, in coat rough or smooth rind, or bearded husk, or shell she gathers, tribute large, and on the board heaps with unsparing hand. For drink the grape she crushes, inoffensive most, and meaths from many a berry, and from sweet kernels, pressed she tempers dulcet creams, nor these to hold wants her fit vessels pure, then strews the ground with rose and odors from the shrub unfumed. Meanwhile, our primitive great sire, to meet his godlike guest, walks forth without more train accompanied than with his own complete perfections. In himself was all his state, more solemn than the tedious pomp that waits on princes, when their rich retinue long of horses led, and grooms, besmeared with gold, dazzles the crowd and sets them all agape. Nearer his presence, Adam, though not awed, yet with submiss approach and reverence meek, as to a superior nature, bowing low, thus said, Native of heaven, for other place none can than heaven such glorious shape contain, since by descending from the thrones above those happy places thou hast deigned a while to want, and honor these, vouchsafe with us two only, who yet by sovereign gift possess this spacious ground in yonder shady bower to rest, and what the garden choicest bears to sit and taste, 
till this meridian heat be over, and the sun more cool decline. Whom thus the angelic virtue answered mild. Adam, I therefore came, nor art thou such created or such place hast here to dwell as may not oft invite the spirits of heaven to visit thee. Lead on then where thy bower or shades, for these mid hours till evening rise, I have it well. So to the sylvan lodge they came, that like Pomona's arbor smiled with florets decked and fragrant smells. But Eve, undecked, save with herself more lovely fair than wood nymph, or the fairest goddess feigned of three, that in Mount Ida naked strove, stood to entertain her guest from heaven. No veil she needed, virtue proof, no thought infirm altered her cheek, on whom the angel hail bestowed, the holy salutation used long after to bless Mary, second Eve. Hail, mother of mankind, whose fruitful womb shall fill the world more numerous with thy sons, than with these various fruits the trees of God have heaped this table. Raised of grassy turf their table was, and mossy seats had round, and on her ample square from side to side all autumn piled, though spring and autumn here danced hand in hand. A wild discourse they hold, no fear lest dinner cool, when thus began our author. Heavenly stranger, pleased to taste these bounties which are nourisher, from whom all perfect good unmeasured out descends to us for food and for delight, hath caused the earth to yield. Unsavory food, perhaps, to spiritual natures, only this I know, that one celestial Father gives to all. End of Book 5, Part 1